Hey guys, welcome to a new video. Anki Raz has just been announced, so get ready for the greatest WoW event in probably all of WoW history. An event where players, both new and old, from any faction can take part in. Yes, I'm talking about the AQ Waterfords. Let me break the Waterfords into three parts. The first part is the Scepter of the Shifting Sands quest chain or the Skyblord quest chain as many of you know. I already made a video about this so I won't talk about it too much. I'll post a link in the description. But in short, this is a quest that is going to be competed by the most hardcore players in the most hardcore guild in your server. This is a massive quest chain that involves a massive amount of effort and dedication. Also involves a massive amount of farming, massive amount of traveling across the world, several raid encounters. I mean, it's basically the rank 15 for quests and it is impossible to do it alone. Uh, watch the video, you'll get a clearer picture. So the second part is the Ankira's war effort. Now this is what the video is actually about. This is where we all can contribute in any shape or form because both Alliance and Horde will need to start contributing to their own factions to make this war effort possible. And only after both the contributions have been met and after someone in your realm has obtained the Scepter of the Shifting Sands, only then will the gates be ready to open. And I hope someone in your server started preparing for this beforehand because the amount of materials you need to farm is unreal. Like, like let me just show you, it's it's ridiculous. Spreadsheet made and ready with all the information you need to know about the war effort. So if you look at it, there's an Alliance and Horde section. So this section is everything the Alliance will need to contribute. And this is the one for Horde. So there are four categories of so there are four categories of contributions you can make and every category has something similar with both alliance and horde for example the first three are the food category and if you see you'll need to con your entire fraction needs to contribute 14,000 rainbow fin albacore 17,000 yellowtail and 20,000 raptor and that's just for alliance and as you can see, the spotted yellowtail is common for the food section. Room cloth bandage is common for the cloth section. Purple lotus is common for the herb section. Copper bar is common for the mining section. And thick leather is common for the scanning section. Both factions will have something in common. But anyway, look at these amounts. 800,000 linen bandages. 400,000 room cloth bandages for both factions. I mean, we're talking about millions of material in donation and if you want to calculate how much this whole thing will cost in your server just update these numbers in the cost price per item so this number is kind of messed up but the board one for my server is pretty realistic i updated all the price to current market price and this is how much the whole event is going to cost for the horde so if you just want to see how much it'll cost for you just update these numbers and you are good to go and by the way this spreadsheet will be available in my discord server in the my links channel section and i put links in every single one of these items so if you want to help donate to your faction you can click on these links and there'll be guides on how you can farm them i also put wowhead links on all these uh like if you go and click on this you can see the alliance wowhead page that's gonna lead you to a lot of the information you need to know here and the way you turn these in are there'll be npcs in your faction city for horde the NPCs will be in the Valley of Spirits. You can see the points over here and if, and the points where you can turn them in. And for every quest you turn in, so basically you can turn in the quests in stacks of 20 in everything but leather. So if you see here, leathers are the only items you can turn in in stacks of 10. Everything else needs to be in stacks of 20. So, so you turn in 20 copper bars to finish one quest for the copper bar section. And if you see here, every time you turn in a quest, you will get a signet. This will be an alliance or a horde signet depending on your faction. The first time you turn in any of the quests, linen, silk or wool, whatever, you will get 10 signets, but just the first time. So for linen bandages, when you turn in the quest, you'll get 10 signets the first time, but every other time you'll get one signet per turn in. Same for silk, first time you get 10 and every other time you get 5. For rune cloth, you always get 10. First, second, last. It's always 10. And the amount of signet you get per quest is dependent on the item level of the material you want to turn in. So the higher the item level, the more signets you get from it. And if you're wondering what the signets are used for, you can use them for two things. You can turn them in to gain reputation for a city in your faction. For example, you can turn in one signet for five reputations with Orgrimmar, or you can turn in 
10 signets for 75 reputations with Orgrimmar. But so as you can see, never turn in one signet. This is a bad idea. Always turn in 10 at a time because you get a lot more value per signet. And the other thing you can use signets for is to get Ankira's war effort supplies. Uh, so you normally get this when you turn in a quest anyway. So when you turn in any of these quests, uh, you normally get uh, some uh, signets and you get a war effort supply anyway. But after you farm the signets, you have the choice to turn them in for reputation or turn them in for war supplies. You can turn 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 in. It doesn't matter which one you pick, you get one supply anyway if you turn in 30 signets you get one supply and if you turn in five signets you still get one supply so what's the difference right the difference is the item contained in them so if you go for the 30 signet war supply crate you have a higher chance of getting a rare or an epic and high level boes basically and same for these quests just like I said before, higher level items will give you more signets and they will also give you better crates. So if you turn in room cloth bandages, you'll get 10 signets and you'll get a war crate that's going to give you high level BOEs like around the level 50 plus range. When on the other hand, if you turn in linen cloth, you'll get one signet and you'll still get an AQ crate, right? But that crate will probably have low level BOEs like level 10 to 20 range. So Keep that in mind and since the first time you turn in a quest you get 10 signets i would suggest everyone buys at least the minimum requirement for all the quests in your faction so you can turn them in and get the maximum amount of signets me personally i'm gonna try and farm about a hundred of the 30 signet war supplies and open them in one video if you don't want to miss that make sure you subscribe and by the way if you want to check progress in your faction, just go and talk to the war effort commander in your city. And if you want to see the opposite faction's progress on how much they have contributed so far, just go to their ambassador. If you are Horde, there will be an alliance ambassador in your city. And he will be able to show you how far the alliance have progressed so far with their contributions. So that's pretty cool. And they will all be in the same locations where you turn in the quests. And by the way, if you're from a server that has huge faction imbalance huge faction imbalance like this server which is literally 99.9 percent .9 alliance i assume you probably have to pay for both the alliance and horde by just creating new accounts and tunneling all these items from alliance to horde so so anyway after everyone is done f contributing after alliance has donated all these items and horde has donated all these items you still have to wait five days for the supplies to be transported to Silithus. So let's say you have finished everything you wanted to do and you have a guy with the scepter of the shifting sands waiting to bang the gong. You still can't do it. You still have to wait five days for the supplies to reach Silithus. So at the very end, after the supplies have reached Silithus and after banging the gong, the last part of the war effort will finally begin. And that is called the 10 hour war. And that 10 hour war is the same 10 hour window where other players will have the chance to bang the gong and get the scab lord mount and title in TBC. I wouldn't worry about the war to be honest since the whole server is probably going to be there during the gate opening. And by the way, once a Colossus has been taken down by anyone, which means you don't have to be in the raid that took it down, you will receive an item in your bag which you can turn in in the scenarian hold for a few, a few cheap BOEs and green items and some consumables. So that's basically it. That's the AQ war effort. Now the point of this video is to show you how much your faction will need so you can help contribute to your faction. This is not an investment video where I'm showing you what you'll need to buy so you can sell off when the war effort begins because if you do that you're basically cock blocking your own faction from progressing into AQ. So don't be this asshole, okay? Anyway, I hope this video was of some help and see you guys in the next video. A big thank you to all the patrons who support this channel and if you guys want to consider supporting this channel head over to the Patreon link in the description. All Patrons and Twitch subscribers get early access to all my videos. If not, a subscribe is also more than enough. And thank you.